can create growth. That growth is tax free. Mm-hmm. And then number three, there's some really specific uh, additional efficiencies that we're able to create so that we're growing this investment, this uh, opportunity fund investment optimizer account um, at the same time. And so quite literally, we're, we're creating a scenario where, where someone is is investing money in two places simultaneously. Welcome everyone to the Road Less Traveled podcast. This podcast is all about people that were successful in their earlier career, but chose to go down a different path. I'm your co-host, Richard Coyne. And I'm your co-host, Bill Zaylander. Today's guest, we had have uh, Rod Zabreski with COO of Money Insights. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Rod, and, and what your former career was and how many years you were pursuing that? Yeah, so um, I my undergrad uh, was in marketing communications, and so I spent five or six years in uh, basically the construction industry, construction company, later an engineering company, doing marketing. Um, but I always had in my mind that I wanted to uh, own my own business. And so I, I went back, did an MBA while I was still working. And, uh, and then since 2007, have been on my own. I won't say that I've been with I haven't had money insights going since then. We, you know, we had some false starts and some starts and stops, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, money insights uh, with my partner, Christian, he and I have been working together for about 10 years now. And, uh, and it's, it's been pretty good. It's been a good ride. Well, Rod, along your travels that uh, ultimately brought you where you are now, uh, you know, in your past career, your past things you've done, you know, yeah. uh, is there something, a humorous story along the way that you kind of made you go, why am I doing this? <laughs> I could come up with a lot of those. I could, I could give you quite a few. Uh, but probably the one that was the most painful and yet maybe the most, uh, I don't know, educational as, as life kind of works out that way. Mm-hmm. So um, my first business that I got into, I bought an existing furniture company mm-hmm. and it's one that had been, had done really well. And it uh, turns out when I bought them in 2007, um, that they had, uh, they had, we had to kind of get things up and going again. Uh, the, re- the reason they had to sell is because they were doing so well with both their furniture side and then they also did cabinets. They decided to stick with the cabinets and sell off the furniture side. Anyway, long story mm-hmm. short, it was just a really bad time to, uh, to try to get back in and get going. So we, we were building things back up, got it going. And then obviously fall of 2008 came along and uh, all of our, we were wholesaling furniture mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. And so all of the retail customers, they're like, okay, great. We're going to have to sell everything off the floor, sell our inventory first before we're ever going to come back. And so a kind of a blessing in disguise was that the, the writing was on the wall pretty quickly. And mm-hmm. so we knew we needed to pivot and, and go figure out something else. Um, but uh, so I, I won't say it's humorous, but the timing was just really bad. Right. So it sounds like that, Rod, was kind of a deciding factor in what led you to your career change and the path you're on now and yeah. focusing on uh, money insight. Um, is that correct? And kind of what led you down that way? So when I, at the point where I started doing my MBA, I, I thought I knew what my future business was going to be. And uh, in the course of, of, you know, doing the, the coursework and, and learning things, I realized that running a business, uh, learning about, you know, what it takes to, to succeed in business uh, was the more important piece and, and the actual business itself would come along, right? So the, the whole idea is everything I thought I was going to be doing uh, went to the wayside. Uh, and so it became a, a, an evolution for me to, uh, to build, build up to where I am now. And so making that decision in 2007 to leave my, my regular job and, and buy this furniture business was the starting point. We obviously know mm-hmm. how that went. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it took, you know, getting back up on the horse and, and doing it again. Um, and so it was, it was just a succession of, of different things. I got into health insurance first. That was my first entree into the kind of this financial slash insurance world. And then uh, in 2010, met Christian. And, and so over time, our relationship evolved to, to where it is today. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and little by little, we just kind of figured things out and put pieces in place and, and have continued to just do what we need to do to, to build up to where we are now. 
So as, as you were really getting money insights going, uh, were there some obstacles that you hit along the way, the things that impacted uh, your ability to proceed? Yeah. So just real quickly, um, Money Insights is a strategic wealth building firm for high income and earners. Um, and we do a lot, a lot with life insurance. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, so Christian and I both kind of were more from the traditional side of the, of the life insurance world, um, which I think is, is to our benefit because ba- with what we do now, uh, we have that expertise to, to do things in the right way, right? Some people may have just heard me say life insurance and they're like, that sounds kind of weird, right? Wealth building mm-hmm. using life insurance. Um, we can get into more detail on, on what that means, but at the end of the day, it became um, figuring out, become ex- be- becoming experts in that field mm-hmm. and then just figuring out ways to get in contact with, with the people that could really benefit from that. And, and so it's again evolved to the point where it is today where we have some really very specific strategic directions that we can take people to really enhance the, the stuff that they're already doing just mm-hmm. to help them to build that wealth more quickly and more substantially leading up to, you know, this whole idea of, of financial freedom. Actually, maybe, maybe let's take a minute, Bill and, 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 uh, and Rod and go into that a bit more, kind of explain a little bit. You mentioned life insurance as a, as a vehicle yeah. to help build wealth. Can you elaborate on that and give us a little, little more insight? Sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll touch on uh, the strategy that we use most commonly, okay. and okay. it's called the investment optimizer. And essentially what happens is we, we work with a lot of people who are, like I said, high income. Our, our model is taking you from high income to high net worth. And uh, what happens is a lot of people who invest in alternative space like real estate or their businesses or notes or basically anything outside of, of Wall Street, what we typically think of it on Wall Street. Um, what happens is, is they get, get that cash flowing in and out of, let's just use real estate as an example. It's a really easy one. Uh, you invest in a piece of property. It kicks off some income. You funnel that money, you put it in your savings account, you build it back up and you go find another investment to, to do it over again. Right. So they recreate mm-hmm. this cycle. And what we find is most people do use just their savings account or money market account or something as that, what we call the opportunity fund that they're flowing okay. a lot of money in and out of. And, and yet there are issues that, that come, accompany that specifically, it, it's not earning anything. It's not doing anything for me while I'm between deals. Secondly, the little bit that I do earn, I'm going to be taxed on. And so with the, with the investment optimizer, what we're doing is we're using life insurance and what's the irony of it is we didn't pick it because it's life insurance. We picked it because of the specific things that we can get with it. So, so in this case, as an, as the opportunity fund, we can create growth that we just can't do with the savings account. Number two, that growth is tax free. Mm-hmm. And then number three, there's some really specific uh, additional efficiencies that we're able to create so that in addition to the really cool things people are doing with their investing side, that we're growing this investment, this uh, opportunity fund, investment optimizer account um, at the same time. And so quite literally we're, we're creating a scenario where, where someone is, is, investing money in two places simultaneously and creating growth in, in multiple places at the same time. So it just okay. becomes a much more efficient way. And, and it doesn't change that the, our clients continue to invest the way they're investing. This doesn't replace those. It just makes mm-hmm. it better. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Go, Bill. Yeah, I was just going to ask, Rod, what was it like as you were starting out and spooling up and um, the new company, what yeah. was one of your first victories you would mark up or a memorable? Yeah. So I think the biggest one was figuring out how to do business across the country. So the traditional, you know, life insurance world, it's, you know, building things locally. And so that's what we were doing, right? We, we live in Utah. Uh, we were connecting with people locally and, and uh, doing our best to, you know, find enough people to keep us busy and, and, you know, put food on the table, et cetera. Uh, and so really it was just a matter of reaching beyond that. And so obviously with technology being what it is today, um, probably the really key moment that that I would call back on is in 2015. So it had been probably six to nine months uh, prior to that, that we had really started doing a lot of uh, work with people outside of the state across the country mm-hmm. uh, through phone calls and internet meetings and whatnot. And uh, we had a traditional brick and mortar office 
And so I was commuting. It wasn't like I had a horrible commute. It was maybe like a 20 minute drive to get into the office, but mm -hmm. I just had this realization. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm driving in, you know, this 20 minutes to get on a, a phone call and get on internet meetings. And I could just do that. You know, I have internet at my house. Right. So mm -hmm. anyway, there was six, six years ago, uh, just built out an office in my home. And, and so that's, that's how I've done business since then. And, and here in 2021, that isn't like, you know, mind blowing, right. I'm, Right. A lot of people have been forced to do that, but, but we've been doing it for, like I said, six years now. And it's been, mm -hmm. it's just a great way to do business and, uh, and we can accomplish all of the same things with, with our, our clients in, in a lot of ways, I think in a lot more efficient ways because of just the use of technology, right? I don't have to be printing off a, a folio full of, of stuff. When I go and meet with a client, we can on the fly be bringing stuff and putting it up on the screen and, and walking through things based on, on what they're interested in and, and what we can, you know, we, we can just do a lot more with our time that way and webinars and just all kinds of things that, that we just weren't, weren't doing before, but mm -hmm. it just, it's a life changer, a, a game changer in terms of that, uh, that ability to connect with people and, and progress through, through that process. Yeah, I, th I think people like yourself and like your business, Rod, uh, you know, who are used to leveraging technology mm -hmm. and and uh, using it as an enabler to to expand their business uh, and have been doing so for, you know, five, 10 years or whatever, have mm -hmm. had a huge advantage, that, you know, given the given the world today, just because we're already used to it. You know, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I've been a, a remote person for years and, and, I've, you know, I, I, I always joke and it's, it's so true. You know, my off, my office is in my laptop and my, and my yeah, mobile phone, right. you know, so yep. I, I just, you know, set up shop. I mean, I can, I can open up a shop and, you know, you know, do business in a corner, sitting in a corner of a hotel lobby, you know, or Absolutely. whatever. I just, yep. I just need to have an internet connection uh, yep. for my computer and my, and my laptop and my phone. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's great for family too. Right. So those trips that my, that my wife would take the kids and go on in the past, I can go and I can still do my work. I don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. be forever taking time off, but I can be, yeah. you know, so I can think of, you know, my sister's home in Idaho and my, my brother-in-law's home in Arizona. And anyway, several places where I've been able to just continue doing, doing what I do. Right. I just like you said, I just pack up my office in my, in my uh, suitcase and, and yep. take it with me and and i'm able to do everything uh where from wherever and it's awesome right. yeah it really is it really is so uh, along your along your new path with uh, with money insights is there mm -hmm. uh, you know is there a humor story that you can share with us something that was uh, something funny along the way yeah well um again I, I, for what's for whatever reason i keep going to these kind of uh, painful situations but <laughs> They teach, um, us, they, they teach us a lot though. Oh Don't man. They? So <laughs> yeah. one of the things that, that we've learned that's just critical with the way that we do our business is, is a good CRM, right? A way mm -hmm. to, to keep track of our, our customers and, and, um, and it hasn't always been that way. We haven't always had the best systems in place. Um, but again, so some of those just humorous things uh, to, to think of right now, you know, the way that we tried to, to track people, uh, and, and spreadsheets are, are great, right? They can have their purpose, but, but at a certain point, you just, you get to a place where, where it becomes painful. So anyway, the, 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 the story is just that we, um, that we had great people that we were able to work with and unfortunately not, uh, not being the best at keeping up with them. And, uh, again, I just cringe at, at opportunities lost. Uh, just because our systems weren't weren't what they could have been and 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 are what they are today, um, and so, uh, it, but it is a process, right? Yeah. Again, I don't want to I don't want to pretend that that I should have been able to go back and and know everything that I know now and and all those kinds of things because mm -hmm. there's there is a learning curve to running a business. Period but then all of those different pieces that along the way that, that helped to make you successful, it, it takes, it's a process, right? And, and I'm, I wouldn't pretend like we have everything figured out even now, right? We're, we're continually sure. improving and, sure. and uh, in, in, you know, five years from now, I'll, I'll laugh about the things that I was doing as we're having this conversation now. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Actually, just to, just to touch on that again, you know, I, I think that you said two things that are really, really, really important there. And that is one, you know, the concept of, of uh, continuous improvement, mm -hmm. Kaizen, 
you know, figure out what's working well, iterate, mm-hmm. De- never be satisfied with, you know, n- not that you're crazy, you know, tearing your hair out, but always right. look, be looking for a way to, to find a way to improve something. Uh, and then, and then again, it also emphasizes the growth mindset, you know, mm-hmm. that, listen, we're going to, we're going to get better. We're going to serve mm-hmm. our customers better. We're going to, we're yeah. going to continue to grow. We're going to expand and serve more, more folks out there. And, you know, and that's what you guys are doing, which is awesome. And, and again, going back to what you mentioned a little bit ago about leveraging technology, mm-hmm. what you guys are doing with this podcast and and others, you know, the idea that we can access the kind of information that we can. Um, I felt like I needed to go get an MBA to get the level of, of education to, mm-hmm. to run a business. And uh, w- while that still could fit for a lot of people who, who are going to hear this podcast, um, the amount of information that we have access to today, the kinds of uh, strategic planning or, or, or just um, tapping into experts out there is amazing. And, and so uh, really not regardless of whatever hurdle you, that you, that you bump into, that doesn't need to keep you from, from getting past it because there's mm-hmm. just so much information that can help us to push past it and, and then continue to push that growth. Like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, it's, it's unprecedented the amount of information that, everybody has access to these days, you know, Absolutely. versus just a few. It's very, yeah, very encouraging going forward. Well, Rhonda, what would you say you are today on your journey, your new career path as you look, look ahead? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, just, just in the context of, of kind of picking up where we just left off, not being satisfied, continuing to push the growth. Um, we have, you know, been very blessed with, with great relationships with, you know, people that, um, allow, have allowed us to connect with a lot of, of great contacts, a lot of great clients to work with. Um, and yet, as you know, it's, it's dangerous to ever rest on your laurels to begin with, but number two, to rely too heavily on any individual stream of, of business to come mm-hmm. to you. Um, and so we're continually just uh, being creative and and setting up systems and things to where we can uh, be forever expanding that net to where we can can bring in, you know, continue to, to expand the sources from which we receive leads and clients. Um, and again, it's not to say anything wrong is, is wrong with the, the people we're working with currently, because it's amazing, right? We're, we're very, very blessed with where we are now. Um, but just recognizing that, that we need to continually be uh, building that out. And so, you know, like, like I said, a minute ago, we're not going to be in five years, we're not going to be where we are today. Uh, we're we're going to continue, continually build this thing. And, and hopefully we'll be five, 10 X, you know, in, in that five year time frame, And, uh, and so building out the team, building out the systems, all of those things are, are continual um, pressures, urgencies that are, mm-hmm. that we feel on us to, to just continue to make that happen. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, it truly, like we talked about four and you're alluding to there too, is the, you know, it really is, all of it is a relationship business. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it return happened to be in the real estate side of it, but, you know, we, we always say to the meetings that we're not in the real estate business, we're in the relationship business because everything yeah. that truly meaningful comes out of, out of it's going to be through a relationship that you have with somebody yeah. or you form. Yeah. Um, and it becomes, it, it becomes an extension of you. So when, when we engage a client to work with us, we hope that they're not, they, they don't, uh, do that business with us and then just move on and not see because, because we want to bring additional value to our clients, especially because again, most of them are in this alternative investing space. And so we have Mm -hmm. great relationships with, with a lot of different people in that space. And so creating kind of a a community mindset where, uh, you know, they, they come to us for that, for example, the investment optimizer uh, to Mm -hmm. enhance what they're doing. And yet, because of uh, all the other relationships we have, the the other, you know, capital, so to speak, human capital that we that we can leverage to to make things even better for them, um, that, that we can continually build that out and, and be a resource in in more than one way to our clients. Gotcha. So so Rod, where does the road take you from here? Where do you where do you see yourself going? Yeah. So um, I think the biggest thing is uh, just getting the word out there. We have, we have so many people that we work with that, uh, you know, we hear it all the time. Oh, I, I wish I would have known this 
mm-hmm. name it 10 years, 20 years ago, or why don't I hear about this, you know, in other places? How, how come this is the first time I've heard about this? Mm-hmm. Or, or I've heard about it from other people, but I just didn't get it. And so it's been engaging in the, the content, the educational type of stuff that we, that we put out there to really help people understand what it is and, and why it works and, and how to be, be successful with it, again, specifically with investing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so that's our, we're on a mission to, to just to, to get that out and through, through more and more avenues, number one, to, to reach out and, and help people to see it, uh, to learn about it, to understand it, not just so they can make a decision on whether or not it makes sense for them, but so that mm-hmm. it can enhance the way that they invest, right? Build, mm-hmm. really truly build wealth for them, build, allow them to create additional streams of income that wouldn't have come if they didn't plug in on mm-hmm. the system. So, sorry, Rod, just elaborate it for another minute, mm-hmm. if you would. You, you mentioned money working in two places at once. What do you mean by yeah. that? Yeah, so um, one of the benefits that using life insurance gives us is with a, a, a insurance policy that has cash value in it, right? Mm-hmm. So we're really enhancing, we're, we're minimizing costs. Again, it's the irony of use, the fact that we say we use life insurance because mm-hmm. we reduce the amount of insurance on the policy to enhance the growth inside of it to create that, okay. that growth that we talked about earlier. Um, but then an, an additional thing that can happen is uh, with the insurance company, we now automatically have access to a line of credit, basically. Okay. So okay. I have my cash value. Let's just use numbers. Let's say I have $100,000 in my, in my policy. They would allow me to, to loan out up to 95% of that in the form of a loan. And so then I take that, let's just say I take that $95,000, I go and invest that in a piece of property. Maybe it's a down payment on a, a rental property, or maybe okay. I'm investing in a syndication or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So it's out there, it's doing its work. But because I, it was a loan that, that I'm using to, to make that investment, my 100000 stays in the account and continues to grow. Okay. So it's earning interest, it's earning dividends on a compound basis while I've, I'm flowing this money in and out in it through a separate bucket. And so again, quite literally, I, I am investing in my rental property and I'm growing my account simultaneously. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Ron, what's uh, something you've recently implemented in your business that's helped you with achieving your goal? Yeah, great question. So um, it's, it's still, we're still building, but one thing that we've really tried to do is, is to kind of create our own, uh, our own stream of leads that, that we can generate. In other words, get, getting our information out there, our own online presence, our own, you know, podcast slash webinar type of activity that, that we're generating. I mentioned a minute ago, kind of building a community that that's ultimately what we envision doing. And so where in the past, we've done a lot of, of um, piggybacking on someone else's brand or, or kind of the, the channel that they, that they use to bring people to us. Uh, we're, we're doing more with our own brand right now. And again, not to circumvent or to to uh, replace what we've been doing, but just to 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 create we allow us to cast the the net a little wider, mm-hmm. allow us to uh, because of the way we do our business, allow us to to um, be more credible with people, give them a, a a vision of of not just what it is that we're doing, but the um, uh, you know, if, if, if people go to our website, moneyinsights.net, they'll see uh, we have a lot of video reviews there, people that we are, that are our client, clients, and they talk about their story and, and what we've done with them and how we've helped them. And, and so it's, uh, and, you know, Google reviews, all those other things are important as well, but, mm-hmm. but being able to see a face and, and associate that with what, what we've done with them and what, what the, this new, you know, prospect is, is potentially looking at doing with us um, and, and just creating that connection because you know even though we can see each other on our, on our cameras right now uh, there, there's still it's still important to know that, that it's a human out there that's you know that, that we're working with and so we may not you know meet and shake hands and and sit across the table like like uh, we, people have done traditionally uh, but we can still you know do the same business and mm-hmm. and and that's you know we've we've proven that out that that people are willing to do business this way um, but you're still recognizing that we need to put pieces in place that can allow them to get comfortable with us and, 
And so right. that's what's a lot of the, the things that we've done, the webinars, mm -hmm. giving people a chance to learn on their own time and uh, at their own speed, you know, not, not having the pressure of, of someone sitting across right. the table and kind of pushing them in any, any one direction. So I, I think those are some of the key pieces that have really helped us to get to where we are now, but, but also that's, it's a big key to, to continuing to push forward. Engagement, you know, yeah. right, right there, you're engaging your customers and, and yeah. trying to keep them involved. And, and again, you you know, this, I'm sure you won't be surprised when I say this, but I read somewhere recently that there are um, a lot of, uh, a lot of brokerage firms that are in trouble with the second generation. What I mean by that is that they've got, you know, a particular client that's been their client for 30, yeah. 40, 50 years, and they've not, there's no connection to the next generation. That yeah. first generation is going to move on at some point, and the second generation has no connection to that firm. So mm -hmm. why would they leave the money there? Right, right. right. You're, you're, yeah, you're, you're connecting right. and engaging your customer to keep that continuity. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and trying to do it in ways, the, the, the kind of stuff that we do can become generational, mm -hmm. right? So we, I've been focusing primarily on someone using the investment optimizer in, in conjunction with their current investing. Mm -hmm. um, but, but there's also this concept that we use that's, we call it family banking because it can turn what we're doing here into a generational thing mm -hmm. so that when, when that estate passes on to the next generation, that these efficiencies, these processes, these ways of, of, of flowing the money in and out of the investments become a part of that, mm -hmm. of what's passing on, right? It's the, it's the knowledge, the experience that, that mm -hmm. passes on in addition to just the, you know, the dollars and the, and the properties and, right. and the estate itself. So. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Rod, what advice would you give somebody who's considering taking a, uh, making a change to move on to a different path? Yeah, I would, uh, two things. So number one, um, I would say that the thing that was kind of like the initial catalyst for me, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert mm -hmm. Kiyosaki is mm -hmm. something that if you, if you're not already familiar with that, get familiar with it. And then, and then the subsequent book called the Cash Flow Quadrant, mm -hmm. um, it just opened my eyes to a, a different way of doing it. And, and just again, coming back to what we do here at Money Insights, we feel like traditional financial planning is broken. There's just... Mm -hmm. Um, the, just the whole idea of building up all my wealth inside of my 401k or, or even a brokerage account, you know, on, on wall street and then turning that into a stream of income and in retirement. Um, to us, there's nothing more ridiculous than the 4% rule of retirement. I don't need to get into too many details on this, but, <laughs> yeah. but, um, but again, rich dad, poor dad, it's just a completely different vision and, and it's a way basically what we're doing is we're creating streams of income to replace our working income so that we can retire instead of this idea that we need to build up a, a nest egg that's going to support us in retirement and just mm -hmm. hope that it works out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And along the way, you're also educating the next generation about yes. some of these steps along the way to help them continue to, to, to not have to learn the lesson you just learned. Yes. They, they kind of learn it from a younger, younger age. I, I, those books are phenomenal. And quite honestly, I listen to them on audible a couple times a year, mm, just yeah, to kind of keep my mind tuned into the, the way of thinking. Again, they're, they're high level. They don't give you the cookbook mm -hmm. and the, and the mm -hmm. recipe and the step-by-step, -step, but yeah. at some point in time, just the mindset it, they, they create and help you get thinking in this frame of, 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 of of mind is, is fantastic. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's the first one. And then the second one is perfect with, with what you just said, because then you want to start creating a, a concrete vision of how mm -hmm. you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going to take steps, right? Uh, for me, I, I had the, the mistaken idea that when I graduated from college, it would be within a couple of years that I'd be able to be where I, where I was. And, and not that there aren't people that can't do that because there are, I'm mm -hmm. just not that person. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so it had to come in steps um, again, that learning curve, but, but just re relying on experts, uh, being, being willing to, to admit that, uh, that, that we aren't by ourselves able to do it all. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but putting in the time and effort that it takes to, uh, to, to find those, those call it a, you know, syndication operator or call it a, 
uh, you know, an expert in the, in the specific field where I, where I want to, you know, build a, a business, or let's say it's someone who is, who, who's built up that expertise and it's just a little daunting to, to walk away from the, the regular work situation so that, so that they can then be on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but just creating a concrete plan, basically a, a business plan for them so that they can, uh, so they know what it's going to take to, to get there so they can quantify the hurdles that they have to overcome. And then, and they just start knocking them out and get there. Right. Yeah. I think it's critical as you're saying that, you know, subject, find subject matter experts in what you want to go deep in, because I think it's so much more critical because instead of the nest egg idea, and then if it goes to zero, you, you have no other options. You've saved all your yeah. life. It's gone to zero. You ran out of money. Or if you can, you have the education, you know how to create the multiple streams of income. You can repeat that as many times as you need to yeah. mm-hmm. and adapt it. Yeah. yeah. There's less, it's less important the value of the business itself or the piece of real estate itself. What's more value is valuable is that income, that stream of income that's coming from that. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, just the ability to replace our act, our active working income with this passive income that we're able to generate from these multiple streams. Absolutely. Well, Rod, what's uh, the best way for uh, listeners to reach you and learn more about uh, your products, your educational events? Yeah. So one thing that we've done recently uh, is we've created what we call our F3 assessment. It stands for finan- the financial freedom factor, mm-hmm. which Obviously, it's it's uh, it's it's kind of just a fun way to to plug in and see where people are along that road to creating that financial freedom and and so it gives you a score and 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 again that becomes a starting point for uh, for understanding what what pieces need to to go from there. So f3assessment.com is uh, is a website you can go to take the assessment, uh, figure out what your score is, and then and then schedule a meeting with us and let's. Let's just figure out what we can do to uh, to plug in again with with what you are already doing and will continue to do, and we just want to make that better. Excellent. Well, we'll link all that to the uh, show notes below so people can uh, have an easy easy path to contact you. Perfect. And we'd like to thank today's guest, uh, Rod Zambreski, with CEO of uh, COO of Money Insights. And thank you for your just, uh, being on the Road Less Travel podcast and discussion. We wish you continued success. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'd also like to thank our audience for listening. We really appreciate you listening. And we'd also like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Remember, the road less traveled may be calling you. We recommend that you listen and take action. Thanks, Rob, for being on the show.